I drew this leg that has curves on four surfaces. You can see that's the front is curved. The side also has a curve. This has a nice gentle sloping curve and so does the back of it. The top and the bottom are both flat but on four sides there's a curve. Easy enough to draw but when I try to extrude with all those curves I run into problems which prompted me to make a video to show how I got past those problems. So let me go ahead and get started on that demonstration and move this leg that I've already made my sample move that out of the way and now what I did was I made a uh, template earlier this was the original template that I used to draw that leg and it's set to the exact dimensions of the finished leg and it's four inches across, six inches up and down. Okay, so once I have that, now well, let me go ahead and make my block. So I'm going to draw a rectangle and make that four. And if you see down here it says dimensions, that's my input box. So I go to the number pad and I type in four, six. Because to try to drag that rectangle to the right size wouldn't be too easily easily done. Alright, and then I'll extrude that to back four inches to make myself my cube. Let me check those dimensions, make sure make sure I did it all right. Okay, that's four inches, four inches, six inches. Now once I have my cube made and, and sized correctly, I select all <coughs> all the parts of it by, by triple clicking. Double clicking only selects one surface. Triple clicking will select the whole item. I want to make that into a component. And the reason is so it'll make it easier to select. I won't just arbitrarily change something. I actually have to get inside uh, the component boundaries and start working on that. So I can't just change it. Um, and if I delete it, I delete it all as an item. So it makes it, there's a lot of reasons to make everything a component. Even my template is a component. Um, to, for, if you have a large project and a lot of components, then you want to have unique names. Their suggested names will make them all unique, but not memorable. So I'll make it unique and memorable. So I'm going to call a curve leg 01. And this was, I had a previous component called curve leg 01 and that's why it asked me if I wanted to uh, save that to the same component and so I said yeah. Okay now I'm going to move that template uh, before I move that let me hide the surfaces all the extrudable surfaces and it makes it easier and I want to move it as a component and set it, line up the corners of the template and the corner of the, of the box and line all of that up together, corner to corner. This way I can start drawing my lines, the layout lines. <clears throat> and I do that using the tape measure tool. And so I select um, a reference edge and I'm going to select anywhere on this uh, edge and just go over one inch and that'll set me up to the top of that arc. I'll select the same reference edge and go three inches and it'll take me to the tip of that arc to the end point of it and then three inches up take me to the tip of that. Once I have that, now I have all my guidelines set up I can start drawing my features so this rectangle is um, for a mortise. I'm going to extrude this inside uh, to make a slot so I can fit something inside there later. And it's uh, it will be a mortise. Okay. And then once I do that, now I draw an arc. And I line it up with 
end point of that arc, my guide arc, to the end point. And they're all on the same plane, so if I use uh, outside or I use the end point of the uh, cube, it doesn't really matter. It's all on the same plane. And then I line it up um, to the edge of that, so this way the edge will be exact. It'll lay over the uh, guide edge exactly. Okay, and I do another arc over here using the same techniques. I want to make sure my orientation is uh, fairly straight on so it makes it easy to find the edge of that arc, my guide arc. Now I'm going to just delete my guides and get out of that. And I'm going to I can't just select my template, so I'll move that out of the way, pull my template over. I like to keep everything on the same axis and work from the origin. just makes it easier to know where I'm, what I'm doing and, and all that kind of stuff. Alright, now using this as a, uh, as a guide, <clears throat> I'm going to rotate my pattern because I use the same pattern to cut the curves, to cut curves or mark curves and arcs and all my features on, on the other edge. And I rotate it 90 degrees. I need to make sure that I am actually oriented the right way because there's nothing more frustrating than to make my, all my extrusions and find out I'm on the wrong side. And yes, I line up perfectly. So that's good. Okay, so now once I have that, pull this off, line up from the corner, I pick it from the corner, and then I line up corner to corner. It just lays on there perfectly. Once I'm in there and I do that, I do the same thing I did before. I set up my layout lines. They're not absolutely necessary, but you just find that it makes it easier to work. So I, I go one inch from that edge, three inches up, and one inch from that edge. Now I'll draw my mortise feature. Just a simple rectangle. Everything I draw now is again it's on the surface of that cube. It's it's inside the component and the um, the template is outside the component. So every every change I make only affects what I'm editing inside the component. Okay, so now I'm drawing my arc. Realign my view so I can find the edge of that arc easily. You see I rotate quite a bit. Rotate, drag, just to make sure that nothing appears foreshortened and then I lose my alignment. Alright, and then once I uh, do that and I can delete my guides, get out of the edit mode, i move this out of the way so I can move this out of the way. And again, I'm careful I want to stay on the axis. So once I'm inside the component, then I can unhide the surfaces. And get out of that. Now, this is, I don't need this for reference anymore, so let me just hide that so it isn't so distracting. Alright, so, let me move this back to the origin. Got the blue line out of the way. And go inside. Now I can extrude. If I try to extrude before uh, I enter inside the component, you can see that little uh, stop icon. I have to actually be inside the component. And you can tell when you're inside, it's, it's obvious. And now you can see all of my surfaces inside those boundaries are extrudable. Now, I'm going to extrude that 
and go back an uh, inch and a quarter because I want an inch and a quarter deep mortise. Same thing here, inch and a quarter. Okay. I'm going to extrude this back. And I just created another edge. And the last one I want to extrude is, is this one right here. I'm going to go back. Uh-oh. Okay, see, I've got it clicked, and I'm trying to draw it back, but it doesn't go. The function works. You can see I can extrude it out. I can't go in. And see, this is the problem I had before, and that's why I decided to make this video. That was... <clears throat> I needed to find a solution for that. Okay, what happens is, right up here, this endpoint, this edge, blocks this surface from being extruded. Okay, it can't go into uh, the the um, into an edge, a surface into an edge, because the computer doesn't know what to do, or uh, SketchUp doesn't. I don't think any program does. Okay, and let me demonstrate on a larger sample here. Okay, I can draw that back, and I just go up to that edge, and that edge acts as a positive stop boundary. Okay, I can pull it past this edge. And the reason is there's no edges in here blocking it. I mean, that edge is, um, it, it just doesn't block it. But that one, that horizontal edge, that, that does block it. Let me hit escape to cancel that. This way I don't have to edit and undo anything. <clears throat> in order to make that extrudable, what I have to do is I have to remove these guidelines. Okay. All right use my extrude tool and that surface does extrude just what I wanted. Okay. All back. But now I can't just extrude this back. So what I need to do is I need to rotate. Alright, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees. And you can see what, depending on which surface I, I reference, it changes colors. That's the uh, red axis, means I'll rotate on the red axis. That's the green axis, the same thing, I'll rotate on the green, and there's the blue axis. Well, I want it to rotate on the blue axis, but if I try to, I can't, it's almost impossible. So what I do, I reference to a uh, blue axis surface, and I hold down my shift key, and that constrains that to the blue axis. Now I can click anywhere on here, find a reference. Now I can let go of the shift and go ahead and rotate that to its 90 degrees. Alright, once that's done, let me select this. I want to copy this into memory using Control C. Control C is the only way you can copy something into memory in, in SketchUp. There's no copy command. Well, I guess there is. Uh, okay, there is a copy command, but I use control C and that works very well. So I copy that because I need to paste it inside this component. I'm going to do that using control V. Or I suppose I could use uh, edit and paste. Paste in place, paste, however. I'm going to just use control D and use the um, orientation part point to line it up and then I'm going to offset that a little bit directly um, uh, pull it back directly using the green axis and I want to make sure that I ha I'm still in alignment okay yes I am Maybe undo that alright now that I've done this, let me explode that component. Now I have no components embedded inside other components. Alright. And this is what I need to do. Now I need to extrude this. I want to go beyond that surface, this surface right here. I want to go completely beyond that. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Extrude this beyond that edge. I'm 